So a related issue in all of this is, what does it mean to be felony friendly? So you're looking at a list, you've already asked the question, where did it come from? You've asked the question, how did these particular companies get on the list? Now you wanna know, what does that even mean? Sometimes it won't be called a, like a felony friendly list, it'll be called like a second chance employer list. So what does that mean? What, what does it mean to be felony friendly? What does it mean to be a second chance employer? Right, because first of all, most companies don't want to be public about the fact that they hire people with a criminal background. So off the top, one reason to not be so wrapped up in these lists that you find is because there's a lot of companies that might hire you. They just don't want to put their name out there and be on some list. So some of the companies don't want to be on a list. But for those who do put their names on a list, like this Second Chance Business Pledge Act uh, uh, under the Obama administration, it's, it's one thing for them to be willing to put their name on a public list. It's another thing for them to specify what that means to be a second chance employer or a felony friendly employer. Because what you'll find is that sometimes felony friendly does not mean all felonies, right? So some of them are obvious. Like if you've got like unauthorized use of a motor vehicle or theft, so that's what I had when I was a teenager and it, and it was called a theft over 1500, but it was a stolen car, right? So that's a, that was a state jail felony at the time. So I might be able to get a job somewhere because the, that fourth degree felony or state jail felony was one that was acceptable. But later on as a teenager, I got an aggravated robbery. Well, that's a first degree aggravated violent offense with a weapon, right? So some companies will be on a list uh, as being like telling the public that they're a second chance employer or a felony friendly employer, but they will not allow violent offenses. So they might let you in if you had check fraud, but not if you had a violent offense like murder, robbery, kidnapping, right? So sometimes violent offenses are not allowed. You know, they don't, they don't pass the criteria or sexual offenses would be the next one. And actually I would put sexual offenses at the top. So if, if there's going to be a company that discriminates among felonies, then sexual offenses, it doesn't matter what kind of sexual offense, is probably going to be worse off than a violent offense. Like it would be harder for somebody with a rape case or indecency with a child to get a job than somebody with a, a robbery or an aggravated assault. So that's just my experience. That's what it's been. So Sexual offenses would be another sort of obvious one. If you have a sexual offense, then it's going to be much more difficult for you to get a job. Even if you're at an employer that has a history of hiring people with felonies, that doesn't mean that they're going to hire everybody. Some companies will even make a further distinction. They might say something like they will not hire somebody with a sexual offense against a child. So they might hire somebody with like, um, what, uh, what do they call that? Uh, statutory rape. So maybe the guy was... 20 and the girl was 16 or 17, but they're not going to hire somebody who has a sexual indecency with a child. So they've distinguished between sexual offenses. So violent offenses or sexual offenses will probably be uh, barred from lists of employers who hire people with felonies or criminal backgrounds. Another one might be uh, a habitual offender. I don't necessarily mean that you were uh, arrested for a particular crime two or three times that could be, you're going to be classified as a habitual offender by the state, but that doesn't mean you're classified as a habitual offender by an employer. But I've seen someone wrote me one time who had like 10 different drug and burglary charges. They were all separate instant incidents. So this person was not doing time concurrently. Like they had gotten out, went back in, got out, went back in. And so they had a, a rap sheet, a long list of uh, smaller felonies. So you know, if you just got one felony on your background, then you would be more likely to get a job than somebody who's got 10 or 15 felonies on their background. So again, just because they're felony friendly, there's going to be some limitations on what that actually means. The other thing is that sometimes the kind of felonies that they don't want are relative to that particular job or industry. So for example, I said, when it comes to somebody willing to accept, you know, felons, they might discriminate or, or, or ban people with violent offenses, sexual offenses, or uh, repeat offenses, but they might also ban offenses that are relative to that job industry. So I remember when I got out uh, trying to get a job at um, like retail stores, like, 
like the polo store and the nautic store there i just there's an outlet mall down from my house and so i went over there and i just went around the mall trying to fill out applications and because i had um theft over 1500 so the the crime is not specified it doesn't say it's a stolen car it just says theft over 1500 because i had a theft case retailers were uh, not going to hire me. It was harder for me to get a job, if, if at all, with a, a retail store, you know, maybe Walmart or wherever, because of the theft charge than a drug charge or a robbery charge. And that's because, you know, especially if you got like shoplifting or check fraud, the, the logic there, it's flawed, but the logic there is if you were convicted of a crime like shoplifting and now you work in a retail store, then it's more likely that you're going to steal from them than somebody who may have been convicted of carjacking and now they work in a retail store. So it's this weird sort of scenario where somebody who's convicted of like carjacking could work at Walmart, but not somebody with shoplifting. So that's a that's flawed logic, but it's a weird sort of thing that some employers do where the kind of job is uh, barring certain offenses. So like an IT job might bar certain offenses like an accountant job, you know, or any sort of like a bank might uh, discriminate against people with money laundering or something like that. So aside from violence, uh, sexual offenses, repeat offenses, then whatever the industry is may not want to hire you because you have a crime that is related to that particular industry. Another example of this is that the employer itself, like the local business, the hiring manager, may not have a problem hiring you because of your criminal background, but some other factor might uh, infringe. So I have already mentioned that like HR, the human resources department, there might be some policy in place where they don't want to hire people with felonies, but the employer, the hiring manager themselves actually doesn't have a problem with it. When another scenario, for example, like in the automotive industry, sometimes you might encounter a situation where, you know, an automotive mechanic shop or a car dealership um, they don't mind hiring you, but the insurance company for that business has a policy against people with felonies that involve a vehicle, right? So let's say you had a stolen car and now you want to be an automotive mechanic. The car dealership or the body shop or the mechanic shop will hire you, but their insurance has a policy against hiring you, right? So in that scenario, it's it's not the employer themselves. It's some other entity that they are in agreement or in a contract with who has the problem. So I've seen that happen as well. So they might be felony friendly uh, and they might hire somebody, you know, for a burglary of a habitation or selling dope, but they're not going to be able to hire somebody with, you know, stolen vehicles because for whatever reason, they have some other relationship with an entity that will not allow people with that sort of crime to be hired and work for that company. The other thing is, what kind of time frame are we talking about? So there's this list of second chance employers or felony friendly employers, but you know, some of you have encountered when you get out and you look at the application, it'll say something like, have you been convicted of a felony in the last seven years or the last 10 years? Or have you ever been convicted of a felony? So different companies with different applications, they have a time criteria. It could be seven years, 10 years, or it could be ever. And then, so the time will be different. And then the question is, does it mean seven years from conviction or seven years from release or seven years from being off paper, right? So when you're, on, when you're looking at an application, the company might specify a particular time, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years, or ever. And the time starts at a different area. It could be the date of conviction, the date of release, or the date that you finished parole or probation. So worst case scenario would be, have you ever been convicted of, you know, a misdemeanor or felony like ever? And another one would be like, uh, you know, ha ha have you been off paper for 7, 10, 15 years? Because, you know, a lot of guys, if they get a 50 year sentence. They did half of it. They're still on parole for 25. So they won't be eligible for some jobs till they're completely off parole. So what kind of time frame are we talking about? And related to this question, people often ask, you know, how should they fill out that box? And so some people are like, you know, put put like we'll discuss, meaning that you want to discuss it in their interview. You know, that's fine. But however you decide to do that, you always need to be honest. You always need to be upfront with about with it, because 
you know, being caught lying is going to look bad in just a number of ways. But not only should you, you know, check yes or say we'll discuss, you need to be uh, uh, intentional about having that conversation with the hiring manager. If they don't ask, if they see if it's on the application, but they don't ask, you bring it up because of those HR issues I was mentioning that you don't want that to happen. You want as much as possible, you want that hiring manager to be in conversation to be in communication with their superiors or their HR or their insurance company to make sure that everything is okay. And if you, you know, you allow it to, to slide and you're sort of passive about it, then it might come back to bite you. Uh, but the point here is just that, what is the time window on this? You know, seven, 10, is it indefinite? And when does that time start? Conviction, release, or the time when you're off paper?